sharing good news of great joy to all people. Elation Church. Welcome to Elation Church. We're excited that you're joining in with us this week for worship. And if you're watching from across Four Corners, Florida, we invite you to come out and join us every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock in the gymnasium of Citrus Ridge Academy. Citrus Ridge Academy is just off of Highway 27 on Sand Mine Road, and we look forward to meeting you there. Now, each week when we begin our online service, we start out by singing a song together, and I want you to join in with us as we count all the amazing blessings of our God. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for all of your blessings that you give to us on a regular basis. And God, I pray that today, as we look into your word, that you would speak to our hearts. Help us to hear the still small voice of your Holy Spirit and help us to embrace your truth today with joy. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to be one of the first people to tell you happy Thanksgiving, even though it's not going to be taking place until Thursday of this week. I just I just wanted to tell you happy Thanksgiving. What's Thanksgiving about? Thanksgiving is a holiday that we celebrate here in the United States on the fourth Thursday of November. Now, the first documented Thanksgiving feasts in the territory currently belonging to the United States 
those early Thanksgiving feasts were first started by the Spaniards in the 16th century. As we progress in our history, Thanksgiving services were routine in what was to become the Commonwealth of Virginia as early as 1607, with the first permanent settlement of Jamestown, Virginia, holding an official Thanksgiving in 1610. Now, the event that Americans commonly call the first Thanksgiving was celebrated by the pilgrims after their first harvest in the New World. Now, this occurred in 1621. This feast lasted for three days, and it was attended by 90 Native Americans and 53 pilgrims. The New England colonists, after that, they were accustomed to regularly celebrating Thanksgivings, which were days of prayer and offering thanks to God for His blessings. On October 3rd, 1789, President George Washington created the first national Thanksgiving Day that was designated by the United States of America. Thanksgiving then became an annual tradition in the United States in 1863 when President Abraham Lincoln proclaimed a national day of thanksgiving and praise to our beneficent Father who dwelleth in the heavens to be celebrated on November 26. In 1939, President Franklin D. Roosevelt declared the fourth Thursday in November as the official United States Thanksgiving Day. Now, when I said Happy Thanksgiving, or when you hear the word Thanksgiving, what is the first thought that comes to your mind when you hear the word Thanksgiving? Some people automatically think of the pilgrims and the Native Americans eating together in that first Thanksgiving day that we just talked about. Other people think of what they're going to eat for a Thanksgiving, and they think of a turkey and dressing and macaroni and cheese and all of those great things that we normally eat at Thanksgiving. Some people think, wow, I've got to get up and I've got to get ready to watch the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. That, I grew up, that was a tradition in my household of watching that parade every Thanksgiving Day. Some people look forward to the football games that come on Thanksgiving Day. After they eat, then they, you know, everybody's glued to the TV to watch the football games. And some people, when they think of Thanksgiving Day, they, they automatically go to the day after Thanksgiving because they got to get papers and look and see where they're going to go for all of those Black Friday sales at all of the stores. So... People think about different things when they think of Thanksgiving. But today I want us to talk a little bit more about what Thanksgiving actually is, because Thanksgiving is more than a holiday. Yeah, we've been talking about the United States history of Thanksgiving, but it's more than a holiday. It should be something that us as followers of Christ, it, that we think about Thanksgiving a whole lot more than just one week a year. We should think about Thanksgiving. That's almost a tongue twister. We should think about Thanksgiving every day. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. Listen to what it says. And this, this doesn't say try. It doesn't say maybe you can. No, this is a directive from the Holy Spirit of God, from the Word of God, and he says this, always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. And if you ever get to a point in your life where you're saying like, I wonder, I wonder what God's will is. Sometimes people talk, think about God's will being some ambiguous target trying to figure out. Well, right here in Thessalonians, it tells us a great part of God's will for your life and for my life is for us to always be joyful, for us to never stop praying, and for us to be thankful in all circumstances. Because that's God's major will 
for you and for me as his followers. It's God's will for us always to be thankful. But we have a tendency to complain. <laughs> we have a tendency to complain about our circumstances. We have a tendency to contemplate our problems. And if we're not always thankful and joyful and prayerful, we can fall into that. And it's real easy to fall into complaining about what's going on. It's, it's real easy for us to set our minds on our problems. But this is what happens when we complain and when we set our minds on the problems that we face. You know what? It always stifles our gratitude. We can't complain and set our minds on our problems and be thankful and joyful and prayerful all at the same time. Those things are contradictory. Now, I want you to think about the goodness of God. I mean, set your mind on the goodness of God. Count the blessings. I, I hope that you take some time this week to really consider all of the great things that God has done for you and for your family and not focus on the problems that you may be facing, but focus on the blessings of God. Psalm 103, I believe, can help us out. So let's take a look at this and let's focus on the goodness of God so that we can be joyful and thankful and prayerful no matter what's going on around us. It says this, Let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart, I will praise His holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things He does for me. I want to tell you, God does good things for you acts of kindness and favor and goodness towards you and to towards me. I mean, it's so much that it's hard for us even to fathom. And I believe we should never forget those good things, those blessings that He is doing and has done for you and for me. Because when we meditate on God's blessings and goodness, here's what it's going to do. It's going to inspire us. It's going to equip us to be people of constant thanksgiving. Because remember, it's God's will for us to be joyful, for us to be prayerful, and for us to be thankful. So meditating on His goodness and on His blessings will help us to stay in that constant state of thanksgiving. Now let's continue with Psalm 103. Verse 3 says that we should remember His goodness and we should be thankful because in verse 3, it says, He forgives all my sins. We should be thankful that God has forgiven us. We are forgiven. There is no record of our wrongdoings being kept in heaven because Jesus died for our sins on the cross. We need to be thankful that God has forgiven us for our sins, that He has pardoned us from the wages or the punishment of sin that I deserved. See, I deserved death for my sin, but because Jesus died in my place, I can be thankful because I am forgiven and I've been completely pardoned from the debt that I owed, from the wage that I was supposed to receive for my sin because the wages of sin is death. Verse 3 again, it says, He forgives all my sins and He heals all my diseases. See, this is the goodness of God. We, we get His forgiveness and then He is our healer. He is Yahweh Rapha. He is the Lord, our healer. He heals all of our diseases. And when you look up the Hebrew text and, and see what all that encompasses, is more than just physical healing. It's beyond that. See, we need to be thankful that God mends, cures, repairs, heals, and thoroughly makes us whole. That's what, that's what the Hebrew language carries with it. When it says, He heals all of my diseases in English, 
It means that He mends us, cures us, repairs us, heals us, and thoroughly makes us whole and complete. And that's who God is, and we should be thankful for that. Isaiah 53, 5 says, He was pierced for our rebellion. Jesus was pierced for our rebellion. He was crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. And he was whipped so we could be healed. And we need to be thankful today that God is our healer. He is the one who can thoroughly make us whole, spirit, soul, and body. That's who God is. And when we meditate on his goodness, it leads us and equips us to be thankful. Let's continue with Psalm 103. Verses 3 and going into 4, it says, He forgives all my sins. He heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death. Now, to redeem something or someone means that they are purchased. See, we were slaves to sin, but Jesus redeemed us from death. The death that we deserve because of our sin. Just like when we talked about forgiveness. See, we need to be thankful, and we, we should be thankful, that Jesus has purchased us by His blood. He purchased us out of the pit, the psalmist says. I was, in, I was in a miry pit, and He lifted me out. Jesus purchased us out of the pit, the grave of corruption and destruction. See, that's what we were trapped in when we were in sin. But Jesus redeemed us. He purchased us by His blood. He purchased us off of the slave block to sin. He purchased us out of the grave of corruption and destruction that we were trapped in. And that should inspire us (laughs) even more to, to be people who are giving thanks to God in every circumstance. I want you to think about this. The the value of an item is determined by the price that someone is willing to pay. So I want you to realize how important you are to God because the Bible tells us in Corinthians that we need to know that we've been bought at a price and that price was the blood of Jesus on the cross The eternal Son of God stepped down out of heaven, added humanity to His deity. Then He laid down His life and He died for me and for you on the cross to purchase us, to redeem us. We were purchased with the blood of Jesus. I want you to think about that because when you purchase something, you know what? The... the, The value of something is determined by what somebody's willing to pay for it. So I want you to I want you to connect the dots here. See, one time I was in Arkansas and we were eating dinner at someone's house, and this grown man who was in his 40s, late 40s, early 50s, it was during the beanie baby craze, and he brought out this pig, this red pig beanie baby. And he told me that he just got it and he paid $300 for it. And he had it in this glass case. And I'm like, $300? I mean, I can go buy a Beanie Baby at any point in that time. That's when the Beanie Baby craze was on. You could buy a Beanie Baby for like $6.95. But he was bragging that he had paid $300 for that. So... Because he had paid $300 for it, that Beanie Baby was worth $300 to him because that was the price that he paid for it. Now, let's get back to our redemption, to Jesus purchasing us. And I want you to realize something. And when you really get a hold of this, I don't don't know if we can ever fully understand it, but when we get a hold of this truth and when we're when we're willing to accept this truth, 
I tell you what, it increases our thankfulness for what God has done for us. It increases our thankfulness for His goodness. You know why? I mean, just answer this question. What are you worth to God? What are you worth to God? Because sometimes we look in the mirror and we say, well, we're not worth much and we, you know, but I tell you, you are worth Jesus to God because Jesus died on the cross. You're worth God taking on flesh and willingly laying down his life for you, shedding his blood for you. That's what you're worth to God because that is the price that he paid. Let's continue in Psalm 103. He forgives all my sins, so I'm thankful, right? He heals all my diseases, so I'm thankful. He redeems me from death. I am thankful that He redeemed me and that I'm worth Jesus, His death on the cross, to God. And it goes on to say this. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. Now, when you look up the words and and get the definitions of those Hebrew words to get a full understanding, here's what it means. We should be thankful that God encircles us. He surrounds us. Do you know that you're encircled by God and surrounded by God at all times? We're, We're clothed in God because we... We're in sin, and then now we're in Christ, so we put on the righteousness of God like a, like a robe, and we become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So God encircles us. He surrounds us. He clothes us. And what does He encircle us with and surround us with and clothe us in? Listen, He does it in His kindness, in His loyalty, in His faithfulness in His truth, in His constancy, because He never changes. He he encircles us and surrounds us and clothes us with His commitment, with His dedication to us, His devotion, His compassion, His mercy. That's what He is telling us in Psalm 103. When He says He crowns me with love and tender mercies, that's what He's talking about. He encircles us, surrounds us. I'm going to say it again because I want it to sink in. He encircles us and surrounds us and clothes us in His kindness, His loyalty, His faithfulness, His truth, His constancy, His commitment, His dedication, His devotion, His compassion, and His mercy. And when we get a hold of that, we should be the most thankful people on the planet because our God is encircling us and surrounding us with His love and mercy. And then verse 5 says this. I'm going to read the whole thing all the way through because I want it to sink in. I don't want you to forget everything that we're building on as we go through Psalm 103. It says, He forgives all my sins. He heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. And He fills my life with good things. Say good things. He he fills my life with good things. Every good and perfect thing that's ever come into your life, the Bible says they've come from the hand of God. And we should be thankful. We should automatically be thankful that, that God satisfies us with good. And if you look at the Hebrew, it's saying it's saying good in the widest sense of the word. With, with huge good, we are satisfied, and God satisfies us with good and His goodness. James 1.17, whatever is good and perfect comes down to us from God our Father. Let's take a look at Psalm 118, verse 1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He's good. His mercy endures forever. And as followers of Christ, as children of God, as joint heirs with Jesus, 
Don't ever forget. Don't ever forget that it's His will that we're joyful. And when we understand all the goodness that He gives us, that's going to make us joyful. We need to be prayerful because He's God. And it's all His. And He is the... He is the king of eternity, even beyond the universe. He's the king of eternity, and he's Abba, Father. He's Daddy. So we need to communicate with him and talk to him and be prayerful. And you know what? When we understand God's goodness, we, we're automatically going to be always thankful. Thankful for his goodness. Thankful for what he's doing. And this Thanksgiving season, I want you to count those blessings and, and make sure that, you know, you're not complaining or contemplating your problems, but we're all, thanks, we're all offering thanks to God and not just the week of Thanksgiving, but every day of our lives. Let's pray. God, I thank you. I thank you for today. I thank you for each person joining with us in this service. And God, I pray that we have a greater glimpse of your goodness and your faithfulness and your kindness towards us. And God, we thank you. We thank you because you're a good God. We thank you for your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks again for joining us here this week at Elation Church, and thanks for being a part of our Elation family. If today's message was an encouragement to you, would you consider sharing it with all of your social media friends? In doing that, you'll be coming alongside of us in our mission of bringing good news of great joy to all people. We'll see you right back here next week at Elation Church. This online worship experience was brought to you by the friends and partners of Elation Church.